If you're afraid of spiders, prepare to come face to face with your biggest nightmare. These gigantic, creepy crawlies will make you thank the universe for the tiny, feeble spiders you've encountered all your life. According to eyewitnesses in the African Congo, a type of spider that's yet to be identified lives inside its own tunnels and towers. Even the Goliath bird eater species make them look like cute little Disney figures. The Congolese have given these spiders the name Jabar Fofi, which literally translates to extremely enormous spider. Their legs span up to five feet, and their abdomens are the size of basketballs. Don't believe it? You're in for a surprise. Join us in this video as we tell you more about the spiders that explorers have encountered while hiking through the Congo jungle. Straight out of a nightmare For those of you who've watched Harry Potter, remember Aragog, the giant spider that was friends with Hagrid. Yeah, now think even bigger. A giant spider may be defined by many as one that's larger than their palm. Some people could have a larger perspective and think of the terrifying Goliath bird-eating spider that lurks in the shadowy crevices of the historic Amazon rainforest. The length of that eight-legged menace is a massive 14 inches. Unfortunately, those people still aren't thinking big enough. When its legs are included, the Congolese giant spider is believed to measure up to five feet across. Cryptozoologists claim that the majority of the Jabar Fofi live in the Congo jungles. The spiders make enormous web nests that resemble trapdoor spiders, according to legends told by the locals. However, it's reasonable, even fair, to doubt such information. First of all, there isn't a lot of information about human-sized arachnids in the fossil record. Second, other than anecdotal accounts, there's no concrete proof of the Jabar Fofi's existence. And some people believe that a spider's respiratory system is insufficient to support anything much larger than the bird-eating species. But what if this is some strange miracle of nature? Well, even until the early 2000s, accounts of accidental encounters with the Jabar Fofi continued to trickle in despite all the global skepticism and rejection. Now, that doesn't make anything easier for all us arachnophobes. Ignorance is bliss, sure, but to know such giant creatures exist, we must get to the bottom of this. A wondrous creature. Spiders are modestly beautiful. Under a dazzling sun, their cerulean, emerald, and scarlet hues create amazing geometric patterns. Spiders, each in perfect form, create webs from gossamer silk that are as exquisite as any duchess's pearl necklace. But are they traps for death? They most certainly are for the carefree insects that become unexpectedly ensnared within them. However, when dewdrops gather along a spider's silken strands, the effect resembles a stunning mandala covered in diamonds. The lesson from Charlotte's web is that every spider is as distinctive as the web she spins. She is forceful, brave, timid, kind, and bashful. When it's time to assemble an egg sac, she does it carefully and patiently. She'll carry as many spiderlings as she can on her back as soon as they appear, or she'll remain in her burrow and wait for them to disperse, like a happy parent sending her kids off to… summer camp? College? Who knows? They come in all colors, shapes, and sizes. In fact, it's claimed that spiders in equatorial Africa can grow to be the size of a giant monkey or dog and roam through the shadowy undergrowth as well as our nightmares. These spiders will make even the bravest among us flee in dread, and you'll need more than just a rolled-up newspaper to protect yourself from them. Uncovering the Mysterious Giants Huge earth-dwelling creatures are rumored to be hiding in the dense, nearly impenetrable forests of the most distant regions of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, as well as Cameroon, Uganda, and the Central African Republic. Jabar Fofi has a shape and coloration resembling a tarantula, with adults having dark brown coloring on them. The Congolese giant spiders are supposed to grow to a terrifying size, and that's really what makes them different. They can prey on a range of smaller animals thanks to their startlingly enormous size, including birds and even larger animals like the jungle antelope known as the dica. Similar to trapdoor spiders, they capture these in a complex network of webs strung between trees and eat them after pouncing out of a little dip covered in leaves. Old accounts from the jungle-covered interior of Africa of porters or tribesmen dying from huge spider bites indicate that the spiders are known to occasionally kill humans and that their venom is incredibly deadly. Now, don't get us wrong, they might be closer to you than you think. There have been reports of Jabar Fofi encounters 
everywhere from England, Canada, the United States, Uganda, Venezuela, Vietnam, and the Amazon. However, the earliest reports in history appear to have come from the Congolese jungle. These spiders spin tangled webs that fan out from tree to tree. These webs, according to tribespeople, are around three feet long and six feet wide. The Congolese reportedly remodel their homes methodically to keep these spiders away from their living areas and their children because of how deadly the arachnids are. Thatched huts are constructed with steeply pitched floors and closely spaced walls to spider-proof their homes. Hunters stay as far away from webs as they can when they come across them. The potent venom of the Jabar Fofi's huge fangs is lethal. Even their eggs are enormous, supposedly yellow in color, resembling peanut shells in both size and shape. According to the natives, the hatchlings are vivid yellow with purple abdomens. As they age, their coloring darkens and turns brown. The Jabar Fofi spider was once quite common, according to some of the natives of the Congo regions where it's been spotted, but it has since become very rare. We wonder why. The First Sightings Although explorers, missionaries, and locals had long reported seeing these enormous spiders in the depths of the African jungle, it may have been a sighting reported by Reginald and Marguerite Lloyd in 1938 that put the Jabar Fofi in the public eye the most. Their sighting was recorded by cryptozoologist George Eberhardt. According to the story, the Lloyds were on an exploration expedition in a remote area of the Belgian Congo at the time when they noticed a black form emerge from the bushes and cross the road in front of them. The pair initially assumed it was just a cat, monkey, or another typical jungle animal. They slowed down their truck to avoid hitting it and allow it to pass. The terrified explorers realized at that point that the creature was actually a massive spider with an alleged leg spread of at least four or five feet. However, the spider had already scurried into the dense underbrush on the other side of the track and vanished before the astonished witnesses could get a camera or fully recover from their amazement at seeing such a grotesque sight. According to reports, Mrs. Lloyd was so horrified by the occurrence that she insisted they immediately go back to their house in Rhodesia. Another account of enormous spiders is from Uganda in the 1890s when Arthur Symes, an English missionary, was spelunking near Lake Nyasa. A number of Symes porters apparently became caught in a web that hugged the ground and was too strong to free themselves from while Symes and his companions were trekking along. Symes was able to release the guys from the trap with the help of his pistol, but not before at least two enormous spiders with leg spans of about four feet across pounced on the entangled soldiers and bit them. The porters reportedly experienced fever and delirium quickly after being bitten, followed by swelling of their extremities and a quick death. Another sighting was reported by a man named Craig who related how his grandfather during the Second World War saw a giant spider close to Port Moresby in Papua New Guinea. Its three-foot-long emerald green glossy web was a peculiar sight. Still, this enormous spider terrified Craig's grandfather so much that he killed it with a machete. An explorer stated that while he and a five-person team were on a scouting operation in Vietnam, they came across enormous spiders with bodies the size of dinner plates and legs that were, in his estimation, 20 to 30 inches long. What did they do? They obviously opened fire at the terrifying giants. And although the spiders had been injured by rounds from the team's M16s, he stated they were still alive and moving around. He added that people frequently saw the spiders close to water sources. So yes, they've been sighted by numerous other people, not just the locals, but most of these sightings happened ages ago. Death Traps and Tunnels According to folklore, these natural freaks are extremely intelligent. It's reported that after building their horrific tunnels of death, they cover them up even more with strategically placed piles of leaves or something similar. And returning to the extensive webs, the Jabar Fofi, comparable to the trapdoor spider, employs cunning strategies to capture its next meal. To booby trap their entire hunting territory, the Jabar Fofi will create these webs between their hiding location and possibly another adjacent tree. The line will be tripped by some unfortunate critter that will soon be on the menu, notifying the spider. Once anything triggers the Jabar Fofi's sophisticated security system, the enormous spider emerges and pursues its prey further into the massive wall of webs before entangling it. Gross. Now, what do scientists think? If these giants are real, their physiology is mysterious. 
Spiders of that size would have to overcome the constraints of their exoskeletons, as several entomologists have noted. Many of the more primitive arachnids also have a book-lung breathing system, which is another barrier. However, modern spiders frequently have book lungs and trachea. This enables a smaller heart, more effective blood flow, and increased speed and endurance. If the Congolese giant spiders are real, they most likely have both book lungs and trachea. The Jabarfofi resembles an even larger tarantula than the one that eats birds. The Jake Lopterus renanii, a giant sea scorpion that lived 390 million years ago, was over 8 feet long, is the sole fossil evidence of such a massive arachnid. Although they share an ancestor, there are a number of factors to consider when speculating that the Jabarfofi isn't a spider as much as it is a species of land crab similar to the coconut crab. The difference is spiders have small hair on their legs to feel vibrations, and crabs aren't covered with hair. Secondly, pincers rather than fangs are present on crabs, and they also have limited mobility due to their shells. But we're still not ruling them out completely. Let's look at the coconut crab, which has a maximum length of 3 feet and is the largest member of the arthropod family, including insects, spiders, and crustaceans. The coconut crab spends most of its time on land and only goes back to the water to lay eggs. They have a branchiostega lung, a special adaptation between gills and lungs that neither have book lungs nor trachea tubes. Instead of water, the tissue folds take oxygen from the air. So could people be mistaking these for giant spiders? We also know that the first spider was discovered over 380 million years ago, and today there are over 40,000 species of spiders around the globe, with more being discovered every year. According to National Geographic, 50 new spider species have only recently been discovered in Australia. The presence of a large species of spider such as the Jabar Fofi seems possible. Still, locals in the Congo claim that while these spiders were once a dime a dozen, their numbers have decreased due to people's continued encroachment on their environment. Unless we get some additional confirmation of the Jabar Fofi's existence or even some indication that its existence is biologically plausible, we'll keep our fingers crossed that these monsters aren't what they're believed to be. But while exploring the African forest till then, it might be wise to keep an eye on the ground and be cautious of any webs that may cross the road, you know, just in case. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.